Hello, I'm Chef Sherry, and I have a new recipe that we're going to try today. Uh, this recipe was recommended to me by a viewer, Lisa Thomas. She's somebody that I grew up with, is, so I've known her my whole life. Um, and she gave me a whole bunch of different suggestions for griddle, healthy griddle recipes. And so this is a second one that I'm trying that she suggested. So we are going to be doing, trying, I hope maybe it might not work out. So, but I'm going to try to do some griddle or some cauliflower steaks. Have you ever made cauliflower steaks before? What in the heck are cauliflower steaks? That's exactly what I ask when I, I think I've seen something about it, but I'm like, what? Who, who, who would do something with something like that? And so I ended up looking at the recipe, looking online. I looked at YouTube. I looked at a few different recipes. I seen Gordon Ramsay had uh, this recipe and um, a few other ones that I had looked at. And this has actually been out there for quite a while. So I decided to give it a try. And we're going to get going, get rocking and rolling with this. Um, I had my griddle preheated. There wasn't really a whole lot out there for griddle, um, for the, the Blackstone griddle uh, cauliflower steaks. And so I'm kind of trying to figure this out. I'm gonna start at 350 and, and I'm using simple ingredients. I'm not complicating it at all. This is the first time I've made this and I was really worried about cutting it. So I'm gonna show you how to cut it, but I'm actually gonna start this because I, I cut some up ahead of time and this is what I cut and they actually turned out pretty cool. So I just cut the cauliflower. I had a head, started with the head like this and I cut wedges out of them, out of ones like that. So they call this cauliflower steaks. And I ended up, I had a, a head like this size and I ended up getting three. And um, so we're going to rock and roll. I'll probably maybe just do two because I think I'm going to use the dome lid. I may be able to get three. Um, yeah, I might be able to do three. We can probably do the three. So let's get started. I'm using an electric Blackstone griddle, 17 inch. Um, indoors. You can also do this on your gas griddles. I have the 36 inch Blackstone griddle and the 22 inch Blackstone griddle that you can also make this recipe on. Uh, but we're going to get started just using some olive oil just to grease the griddle a little bit so that it doesn't stick. I have my griddle preheated at 350. This is telling me, the, the display panel is telling me that it's at 350. If you're using the gas griddle outside, you're going to be doing probably medium low, I would say. Um, medium might be a little bit, a little bit too high, but I would say medium, medium low, probably. Okay, so we are going to... I'm going to season season this side of them just quickly, just salt and pepper. Remember, I'm just doing simple ingredients, simple stuff. So I'm just using salt and pepper. I just use the olive oil. And then I am going to use, I got this, the butter, seasoned butter. So this you can get in the store. I've used both of these before. I use these all the time on all different kind of recipes. So there's the Lando Lakes garlic and herb, or this is a Meyer brand, the Frederick's Parmesan garlic and basil. So you can also make your own. I will link in the description my own recipe for this because I'm I use these all the time. So I'm just going to take these and I am going to set it down I heard a little bit of a little bit of a sizzle like that and I'm hoping I just want to make sure yeah, we should be able to I just want to make sure to use the the lid because I'm going to steam this I'm using the middle of the griddle this is 
not so warm on the outside, but it's nice and toasty on the inside. Yep, I'll be able to use my lid on this. So I'm going to season this side. In this, like Lisa and I have talked, I like to use a lot of times Lowry seasoned, seasoned salt and Morton's pepper. You could do that with this too, and or any of your favorite seasonings. So then I'm going to take the butter. I'm going to actually use this. This one I got today. So this is just garlic and herb, the butter spread. And I'm just going to take a dollop of it and I'm going to put over top of it. And basically it's just going to melt through it. Like that. Get going like that. And then I'm going to put a little bit, a little bit in the middle, maybe around, around it. Just to kind of give it a little bit of head start here. Just like that. Okay. And then... I am going to be using, which I didn't get, who, what did I do with it? I didn't get, I was going to do my squirt bottle of water and I didn't grab it. So I'm just going to just take a little bit of water here and I'm just going to put it over top. And that I'm going to steam because I'm going to kind of steam cook this. So I'm going to use the lid to cover that up. And I'm just going to let that steam cook for a few minutes. And we're going to see, see how it goes. Hi, Lisa. How are you? Glad, glad to see that you made it again. So this, we had talked about this recipe. Have you ever made this before? The, um, I know this was a recipe that you suggested. Have you ever done this before? The cauliflower steaks? And hi, Dan. Dan is here. Dan's been here for several days. Dan, your cookbook is in the mail. I don't know if you got a notification. Dan ended up ordering my cookbook. I have this cookbook, Recipes for the Blackstone Griddle, and he ordered one yesterday, and so I got it in the mail today for you. So you should be receiving that in the next couple of days. And um, let's see. What and as like Lisa and Dan um, did, which they've been on for several times. If you're coming in from Facebook, if you just put your name with your comment, I really want uh, you guys to comment. Give me suggestions. Yesterday, you guys were a huge help to me. We had a couple viewers viewer on that. I was kind of panicking yesterday and. I was like, oh, I don't know if this recipe is going to turn out. And the, I, uh, was it Gloria? Uh, she, they suggested that I put the lid on and let the, let the it steam cook. And so I did that and the recipe turned out perfect. Everybody really liked it. And it, I was, I was pretty surprised. I really, really liked the final outcome of it. Yeah, so Lisa has done this in the oven, it used olive oil and then the nature seasonings. So, yeah, I, um, I just, yeah, the nature seasoned mate, we, Lisa and I use this in, I have it here. So this is our normal seasoning. We use the Lowry's seasoned salt in the uh, Morton's nature seasoning is both mine and Lisa's preferred seasoning. Um, but you can use anything, you know. I'm That's one thing that I like people to use what they're used to. And um, let's see. I'm just kind of reading the comments. So if you come in, please, please, if I like hearing from where you're from, if you're new, just tell me where you're um what state you're from and just put your name in there. I really like to hear, or I actually read all of them and stuff. So um, I'm going to peek at this quick just to see how it's doing. 
not doing too bad. I'm going to just let it go. So basically, I'm kind of looking for, I want it to be a little bit golden brown. I don't want it to be burnt. That's why I was kind of looking at it. I don't want to burn it. I do have it at 350, but I'm hoping that that's not too high. But you want the you want golden brown on each side, but you want it done in the middle. And so that's where the steaming the water, steaming it, cooking it, comes in but you also want the golden brown from the griddle on each side too so okay I'm going to show you how to cut this I pre-cut it ahead of time because I was worried that it might not work and I wanted to make sure that I had ones to go on there so I that's why I pre-cut it and I have that going but I wanted to show you how I did it it's it's not too hard I was kind of worried but I'm just going to take and just cut all the, the green parts off here, making sure not to like cut into the flesh of the cauliflower. Just cutting the, the green part off, the leaves here. And we're going to discard them. like that and so these we're just gonna toss we're not gonna use at all so now I'm left with this big piece here so I'm gonna cut this so it's kind of flat with these other parts here but it might not be 100% but we'll so I basically have my knife up against here to try to get as flat as I can like that so we've got pretty flat bottom and the reason I'm doing that is so that it's sitting flat and not really rocking too much and when we're cutting it so you don't if, if you're rocky either cut it flat try to get it more flat so I'm going to check this just to see I is, I am seeing a little bit of smoke there. Okay, and be careful when you don't lift the lid up and let all the steam go. I've talked about this before. And be careful, I had a steam burn the other day when I touched just the edge of it. That's what that is from, is from that lid, the steam burn. So I'm gonna carefully, I'm using the big spatula and I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna make sure to try that if it's sticking, you want to kind of get it all in one piece. Let me do this one here, I guess. We're gonna do this. And be careful, because it is hot. Okay. Not really a lot of golden brown color on there. Gonna turn it like that. Okay, that we're getting more golden brown, and there's there's something, okay, this wasn't sitting flat on the griddle, and I knew it should. There was this piece that was underneath there. You want to make sure that that's sitting flat so that it has good contact on the griddle. And now this piece was kind of sticking, and I don't want it to, yeah, see, it's kind of fell apart from its steak consistency. Yeah, we're going to this one is is not cooperating but we're just going to roll with it i'm just going to kind of put it back together like that so one thing we're going to go like that with it one thing with cutting these steaks is that you can either cut one piece down the middle and get one kind of thicker piece and or like I did it I cut it down the middle and I ended up cutting two on the one but when I cut the other one I didn't quite get so you're gonna have to decide how you want to cut it all right let's see for some reason that is not sitting so at this point if you want to add I'm going to wash my hands quick here. 
Um, I'm actually maybe going to add a little bit more butter on top of these to let that soak through on them. Because basically it just kind of melts through and gets on the griddle. And you can either add, if you don't want like more butter on there, you can add more oil if you want, or you can just let it toast. I'm not going to, I'm going to grab to test it. Now I'm going to see, just take the knife and you don't want to garf, garf the griddle here, but I'm going to see it's kind of firm. So I know that 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 still needs a little bit more cooked and see that's still firm. This one's not too bad. It's firm here, but basically this is kind of cooked, but I think that was maybe a little bit thinner or maybe it's because where it's on the griddle. I'm just going to add just a little bit more water, maybe in the middle, just so it creates steam. And then I'm going to put the lid back on it. And we're just going to let it cook and see what it does. I'm not really reading the comments. I apologize, you guys, because I'm trying to get through this. I've never made this recipe, and I want it to turn out. I want you guys to see it turn out. So I'm kind of nervous that it's not going to work. Hi, Sheila. Sheila hasn't really, I haven't seen much of Sheila. I think maybe she might be catching the replays. Sheila has been on a lot of my stuff. She is in my Griddle Secrets course. Um, she has the cookbook, the digital, and the printed versions of my cookbook. Sheila has been a huge supporter of mine, and she's from the where I grew up, just a town away. So she's still in the same county that I'm in. Um, so thank you, Sheila, for showing up. I really appreciate it. Um, so Lisa did ciabatta. And so when Lisa does this in the oven, she said she doesn't flip them, which, thank you, Dan. <laughs> I'm trying to relax, but it's just like, sometimes I just get like, especially with doing new recipes, I want them to turn out and, and I get really nervous about it. And it's just like, oh, take a breath, take a breath. Okay, so we're back to this. I cut the flat. I'm going to just rinse. Just give it a rinse. And then you're going to want to dry. If you're, if you're using it right away, just dry it gently. Like that. And so it's time to cut. For this, this one, for some reason... There was a garf out of it. I think maybe they, before they wrapped it, somebody cut it, because I know I didn't. Um, but I want to, I, I'm gonna cut it like I did earlier. So hopefully it'll turn out, hopefully we'll get at least two, maybe some more, but I'm cutting it right down the middle. And I found like if you hold, like the top when you're cutting it that it works a little bit better so this one's already got some of the pieces out of it but that's okay so i'm actually gonna try to get two steaks and so you can cut them like an inch i'm gonna cut them just maybe yeah maybe i'm gonna cut them about an inch so i'm using my finger i don't know if you've ever done that before but i use my inch finger all the time and I'm gonna cut them about an inch. So it's kind of hard because it's kind of wobbly. So I get the knife started and then I'm kind of holding in here to get to cut straight down and to try to keep the pieces together, to try to keep it together in one stake. And there we go. It actually, it turned out pretty good. It, it held together. There was a little bit that fell off, but not too much, not too bad. So we have one there. I'm going to try to get another one out of this. And this is actually probably not going to work because it's not connected 
It's not connected there, but I'm going to try it anyways to see if maybe, and I think that's what happened with the one when I cut it or when I flipped it, it fell apart. So I'm going to gently go like that and I can already feel it's, it's, it fell apart. It fell. So you can get like maybe two smaller ones or you can put them. Yeah, I think they're like that. So that one didn't quite work. So we're going to set that aside. So this then you're not going to use. I'm going to check this really quick. I'm going to let that go just a little bit longer. Like that. Okay, I'm going to take this here. And it's kind of can be kind of a little bit messy. So I'm going to hold here, but you're going to make sure that you're cutting straight down and not toward your hand. So I'm actually going to start like that. Get the knife in a little bit, and then I'm going to hold both pieces so that they stay together. Because I think when I cut it earlier, this one had a tendency to want to come out and then it broke apart. But I'm actually holding it together so that it doesn't do that. So let's see. There we go. Nice. Nice. So at least we got two nice good steaks. Now let's see here. And this is probably going to be this. This is going to be the same way because the 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 root part is gone off of this, but I'm going to see if maybe I can get like a part of a one to see. Yeah, and I can feel it already breaking apart. So you can either do, yeah, and this one, this one just kind of fell apart and didn't, didn't get. So I know when I was doing, watching the recording, um, or watching the other videos, they were only getting one out of a head of cauliflower. And, and I was really trying to get, when I did this, I got three out of the one from earlier. So that was pretty good. This head, I only got two, you know, in a part of a one if I want to do smaller pieces. Kathy, Kathy's here. Yay. Kathy, have you ever made this before, the cauliflower steaks? Um, out of the middle and save the rest for another recipe. Yep. So I, you just, you get one steak then, Kathy, from a cauliflower then? Because I think a lot of, a lot of people were doing that. And then you just take this and use it for another recipe. I'm going to show you what I did with it earlier. So I'm going to check this. Remember, I'm just taking the lid and bringing it over. And, and I can tell... It's golden brown, the, the griddle is golden brown, so I'm pretty sure that the bottom there is nice and golden brown. I'm just going to check it for doneness. Yeah, and I can tell that the cauliflower there is good. The, the stem is still a little bit firm, but that's okay because a lot of times, I don't know if, if I'm you, but I probably wouldn't eat so much of the bottom stem. So I think we're, I think we're good. Um, one thing that I wanted to do, yeah, so Kathy has done this. I got two, she gets usually two steaks. So I wanted to take and, um, you know, I could try to flip this again, but I don't want to break it apart. I wanted to add some Parmesan cheese to it because I like cheese. I'm, um, even though it's, you know, a vegetable, vegetarian butter. It's got the butter in it. So just, uh, um, I'm, I want to add a little bit of Parmesan cheese to it. So I'm just going to go like this. Just do some fresh over the top. And it just adds a little bit more flavor, another dimension of flavor to your, your meal. Put the wrapper there so I'm not. You know, and I can use pre-shredded also. I do have that. I, But I just wanted to shred my own here because I do have the brick here. I like to. 
and I'm not going to use a ton. I'm not going to coat it. Just enough just to give it a little bit of flavor in every bite when you're biting. Just like that. There we go. Mm -mm -mm. I'm going to try to get close here so you can see, maybe see. See, there is a little bit of golden brown color. I do have brown in the griddle is, is brown in color. So it's going to be interesting to see how this comes off. I'm going to try to maybe... I'm going to take a quick picture of it on the griddle, though, first to see. Okay. Like that. And... Then I'm gonna try to get this off without breaking it. I know this one's already broken apart. So I'm just gonna gently, and I do have my big spatula that I'm using. I'm gonna bring it off. I'm gonna see, it's hot. Yeah, we got really some golden brown color. Do you see how that is? Nice golden brown color there. I think I'm going to maybe turn it, yeah, we're going to turn it like that. And I'm going to get this one here. We're going to turn this. Ooh, 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 look at that. Mm-mm. I'm just going to remove this quick because this, this was the one that kind of broke apart. So it didn't quite turn out for us, but it's still going to taste the same. It's not like it. I'm going to shut my griddle off. And as you guys see, my griddle looks pretty gnarly today. This is the burnt on butter, the brown butter. I do have, I will put the link in the description, the um, how to clean this properly. So there's a certain way you don't want to take this and just like scrub on that because you'll ruin the porcelain top. You can do that if you're using the outside griddle. You can use the metal utensils to really scrape it good. That's fine. But when you're using this, the electric griddle, it has this porcelain top you need to treat it with care and protect it. So I will use, I will soak it. I have the video, but this is my secret weapon that I will, I know I'll be using on this is the magic eraser to get it clean. But look, look how beautiful that is. Mm -mm. Um, Allison, Allison is my photographer. She takes all my beautiful photog my pictures for my website. And she said that the first time I ever had a cauliflower steak was at a wedding. And I don't typically love cauliflower, but it was so good. Um, and she said she's not sure what they used on the seasoning. And I think the seasoning, you, it's, you can use whatever. I know like Gordon Ramsay used a lot of fresh herbs. He used like squeezed lemon juice on it. And that, and I just wanted to keep it simple for you guys. I wanted to do simple ingredients so that if you wanted to try it, that you weren't intimidated and didn't, you know, I just say go in the refrigerator, use the ingredients that you have. If you don't have the seasoned butter, just use regular butter. That's fine. You know, don't, don't, don't use complicated. Like yesterday, I didn't have the low sodium soy sauce and but i did go today and get some so i do have low sodium soy sauce in the house now um but yeah so just use the ingredients that you have and just roll with it um we were kathy says we were at disney last week and got a cauliflower steak and they served it with cilantro pesto and a carrot Revzemko. I'm terrible at pronouncing things. So yeah, I, yeah. And so that's another thing too. Like if you want to garnish the tray, garnish the plate, 
and have a sauce underneath of it, that's perfect to do with something like this. Um, or, you know, like put a sauce on the top of it. That is something awesome to add to this. You know, when, when I eat, I found, and, and this is just me and my husband, but it's like, we are so simple that it's like, if we add like a ton of extra sauces or condiments or this or that to that, we probably wouldn't eat something like that because it's like, we just like simple. But if you serve this to us, we would devour this because it's just simple ingredients and, you know, it's cooked perfectly and it smells amazing. It's, look at the color on that. I love that. That turned out perfect. So this is the first time ever making a cauliflower steak. If you've never done it, you've got to try it because you can, you know, you can make something like this. I'm not going to try it right now because I want to actually... I'm gonna swap it out because I want to take a picture of it beforehand. I might try this. So do you guys have any questions? If you, I know you've been piping in and you guys have been amazing with, with talking to me as I'm cooking. I looked at yesterday's and there was like 46 comments after yesterday's thing. That is so awesome. I like talking back with and forth with you guys. And uh, you know, I, I was so nervous yesterday and by you guys suggesting things, it it made the recipe better and it made my cooking experience better because I was just so nervous about cooking it. And then when I was having issues with the griddle, yesterday when I was cooking, for some reason it kept on popping up. I don't know what the, the deal was with it because I'm looking today and it seems fine. So I... It, I don't know. And usually when I get done with it, I check to make sure that it's in the right position and stuff when I put it away. And I I don't know what was the, the issue with my griddle yesterday, but, but sometimes you have that and you just kind of got to roll with it and, you know, just, just do what you can. Debbie, my Debbie, my neighbor from right back over there is on. Hi, Debbie. Um, she, I, I, she's an amazing cook also. She's always constantly putting pictures on and, um, yeah. So I know Debbie from way back. We know we've been, we've been neighbors here. What have we been here? 30, 30 years in December was our 30th would have been, we've been here for 30 years. So I've known Debbie that long and I worked with Debbie Kathy McBride. Hi, Kathy. How are you? I haven't seen Kathy in forever. Um, thank you for joining us. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to kind of talk to you guys a little bit. We're all done with this. This is great. What, what time is it? So 30 minutes. I did this, cooked this in under 30 minutes. So it didn't take very long at all. But um, I have some amazing things planned. I'm going to announce this maybe tomorrow. I'm just giving you guys a little teaser. Um, I am switch swapping things up a little bit and adding some new things to my routine. And I am going to announce what I'm doing tomorrow to something new I'm excited about and just some changes that I'm kind of going through. So I am super excited about it. I hope you guys have liked this cooking series. This is day, what did I figure? Day 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, I think 25, day 25 of the Healthy Griddle Cooking Challenge. I've been doing this since January 5th. So I have every day I have a healthy griddle recipe. If you've missed any of it, you can go back and just watch my videos that I have on my YouTube channel. I do have most of them on my face in my Facebook group, Blackstone Griddle Lovers, and then a few on my From Michigan to the Table page because I just started, I was working on trying to figure out the system that I'm filming and all of that. And so I figured that out and as we went along. But all of these, all of my videos are on YouTube and you can go to my page, type in the search, Chef Sherry Ronning, and it'll come up and I have all the Healthy Griddle Cooking 
videos in there. So starting February 1st, I am going to be swapping it up a little bit. So that will be in my announcement tomorrow. And I will be trying to get together a link for you guys because what I've been doing is uh, sending out an email right before I go live to let you guys know that I'm going live. But that's the Healthy Griddle series that I was doing. So I'm gonna get you guys another link if you want to know when I go live. Because when I go live, I'm just going live. I This is kind of my schedule. Um, and I can email you when I'm going live but I'm gonna have the special link for you to sign up to do that. So it seems to be working really well. I've have, I don't know, 30 some, it's kind of added every so often. And um, I've added, I have more than 30 people signed up to that list. And so every time I go live, like a couple minutes beforehand, I shoot them an email letting them know that I'm gonna be cooking. And a lot, a lot of you guys have been showing up. I know Dan has been showing up, Lisa, um, you know, I appreciate all of your guys' support and I hope you guys get out and cook on your griddle. I'm going to go eat. Oh, I was going to show you guys. So you have the leftover cauliflower here. I have the perfect recipe for you to make with that. And I actually made this beforehand. My brother Joe came to eat. So it's kind of, I, and he, and I sent a whole bunch home with him because he loved this so much. But I have this cheesy cauliflower broccoli carrot soup that is amazing that you can use all these bits that you haven't done and make this amazing soup. So I will post this in my YouTube description it's called in the description so if you want to look for that or you can go on my website from michigan to the table.com and you can just do a search for soup you just type in soup and a whole bunch of them will pop up and this is one of them uh, this is a soup that i can make in 30 minutes and it is super easy and my family loves this soup and i sometimes will do a bread bowl with this so lisa your bread your bread that you make would go amazing with this kind of a soup um i have my recipe for the blackstone griddle if you want to order that i have the printed copies and if you order the printed copy you can get the digital for free i know dan just went and ordered that and i send that out in the mail to him today um i also have my griddle course but you can go on mygriddlesecrets.com and you can look at that where to get that i think i have a shop button on there but there's different spots where you can look at that and then i also have my website from michigan to the table.com that has all the recipes not this recipe because this is something new that i haven't done yet before but i will post it in the youtube video and give you the recipe on that i hope you guys have a great evening it's been a pleasure and tune back tomorrow i'm not sure what i'm going to do for tomorrow i haven't quite decided but i will be on for the last day of the healthy griddle cooking series so I hope you guys have a great evening and we will see you tomorrow.